So uh, first 30 minutes is the focus on the different committees and boards. The second hour, the, or the first full hour from 6.30 to 7.30, um, we're bringing both groups together to talk about what's going on, who's doing what, how we can help each other out to achieve what we're after, uh, reaching the goals of the township. In the final 30 minutes, I'll dismiss all my board and committee chairs. I'll ask my nonprofits to stay so that we can talk about a few things that relate to that group. Specifically tonight, I want to go over budget requests. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to keep this um, moving uh, pretty quickly. Um, so I, I do believe most of you I've had an opportunity to talk to uh, at your committees. Uh, related to the change and requirement for agendas, uh, because you are a township board or commission uh, or committee, you are required to have an, an agenda that's posted on the website at least 24 hours in advance. And you can't just make changes on the fly during a meeting. If you're going to do that, you have to vote on it uh, at the meeting and you have to have a majority vote. Uh, to do it, uh, you then have to explain why you're doing it. And then in addition to explaining why we have to add it, we have to repost it uh, the next day with a full explanation and all who voted for it and what the piece was. Um, so there's a lot of requirements. Uh, in your packet that's in front of you, you should see a form that looks something like this uh, that's on the table there in front of you. That kind of explains the law, um, and I encourage you to just kind of look through it and understand it as a chair in particular. Probably for the next couple of meetings, I will talk about it every meeting just to make sure that everybody knows what we're doing and understand that we can't just arbitrarily add a, uh, an agenda item to the agenda. You have to have it, and you have to have it. Uh, because we have a website asking on our website prior to the meeting, 24 hours prior to the meeting. For us, a lot of times that means that it needs to be on because a lot of our meetings are on Mondays. I know some of you are on Thursdays, uh, but we have quite a few that are on Mondays. Uh, for those of you who are on Monday, that means we have to have it on Friday because uh, I'm not asking staff to come in on Sunday to figure out what an agenda item is. Um, and so, uh, but we decided that what we wanna do is actually produce all agendas on Friday the week before, uh, so that we have them all done. And so I also have placed in front of you, um, a, a, I didn't place, she didn't place in front of you, um, the items due for the agenda date. So if you have something, I know a couple of you like zoning and planning commission, your agenda is often set by us in regards that it's, we're bringing before you the cases or whatever, you know, the design development you need to hear. But occasionally you have something that you want to take care of business wise and the board. Uh, for the rest of you, we, you know, we set it, but it's always with your help uh, of setting it. So this is going to be the date that we want items due, and it's the Wednesday before the meeting. Um, so if you're, if you happen to be meeting on Thursday, um, and we want it the Wednesday before that Thursday. So it's not a full week before. So um, so anyway, that's the purpose of this. Uh, the place where this really matters, I, I think, is when you look at the board of supervisors agenda. If there's something that you want to send to the board out of your committee, we want to make sure uh, that we have the proper dating for theirs as well. And so we'll, we did this for the next four months. Um, We'll do it for the entire year next year so that everybody has it, uh, what that looks like, and we'll get it out to you in writing and as well as all of that. We're kind of going on the fly on this one. Uh, the legislature passed this at the end of June, has to go into effect at the end of August, and so we're just trying to get all of it put together. We've been working towards it. Uh, we've always been good about posting the agenda on the website anyhow, so I'm not too worried about that part of it. It's making sure that we don't add anything to the agenda after, after that 24 hour mark. So that's the big key, uh, that's the thing. So please work with your committees and your boards and your commissions to make sure that we can do it. Any questions on agendas? 
Can you add attachments? Yeah, I think you can add an attachment as long as the attachment isn't related to the, as long as the agenda item is specific enough that it's clear what the attachment is explaining. Like it, what I don't want, what you probably couldn't do is say, we're going to, for example, and I'm going to pick one public works because George is sitting here, purchase, uh, and just had to pick one in George. Um, George wanted to purchase a new truck. And you can't just say I want to purchase a new truck. It, he would have, and then attach a description of the truck and the price later. We would have to have that ahead of time of what the description of the truck was having in the agenda and how much it's going to cost, so that it's so that everybody's clear about what the cost is, because that's what we're really voting on, you know, as an action item. Now, if you have a presentation, that's probably okay, um, as long as you're not wanting an action item on that presentation. If that makes sense. But if your committee is taking an action as much as possible, you should have whatever it is that they, you want them taking action on on that agenda and be pretty clear about what it is. If that makes sense. Any questions? Okay. It looks like this is it for the item to discuss. We can't take some action. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's just a discussion, but it, it talks about it being de minimis. Talks about it not having any contractual. There's all these rules that go along with it. And so we're taking the stand as much as possible. We want everything on the agenda uh, ahead of time. And the, the ability to discuss is also limited to kind of things that come up with public comment and those kinds of things. So uh, it's just real important. So, particularly for the board of supervisors, um, we're we're watching this real closely, you know, just to make sure we're doing it uh, correctly. Uh, so if your committee or commission or board is asking for the board of supervisors to take an action, this schedule of their meetings of when we need it in body becomes very important. Make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Steven, so in some cases, um township. And I'm sorry to be specific with yep. that particular board, but oh, that's fine. in some cases, the township is in um, negotiation with the applicant, right. like as they're coming to the board. Yeah. So in, in many cases, if that's the case, we'll continue it. Yes. And then with the stipulation that you continue the negotiation with yes. the township. So, so we are, we're not really asking them to do anything new. You're not, you're not, you're, you're pretty clean. The way you're, you're you're operating within the laws as you always have been, it's just important. Like so, for example, if we were going to, like if you needed to select a new chairman of your board, you couldn't do that. You could do it for the night, but you couldn't do it on the fly. You would have to have you would have to state that you were picking a new chairman. Any other questions? All right, uh, I'm going to keep moving. I'm just trying to be faithful to everybody's time. I, but if I hurry and you have questions, I, I want you to ask them. The next piece in your packet is a thing that looks like this. Uh, it's our strategic plan. And so uh, I ask that you take a quick look at that. If you haven't seen it before, um, just look through it. I do want to bring your attention, uh, starting on page 13, um, in specific, uh, it starts to spell out the directives, outcomes, and initiatives. Um, and I'm bringing this to your attention because we're going to be asked, uh, I'm going to be talking about budget sheets here in just a minute, budget requests. Uh, when we look at the budget going forward, uh, everything is going to be tied back to our strategic it doesn't fit in the strategic plan, we're going to have to have a conversation of whether or not it actually ends up. Um, it's, we, we, we spent a lot of time looking at the strategic plan. Uh, we had a committee of uh, township residents that did that. And so uh, it was very important. And so uh, each, each page starting on page 13, in some cases, there's a couple pages involved with the directive. You'll see the directive at the top, and you know the first one's easing traffic congestion, and then we have our three outcomes, 
that we're looking for. You know, speeding in neighborhoods is greatly reduced, traffic congestion and flow is significantly improved, and roads are in good repair. And so when we look at when we talk about it from a chain township side of the staff, we look at those three outcomes and say what budget dollars are going to these areas. Um, and I've given Rich our, our finance director the dubious job of tying every line item and options within that line item back to certain ones of these. He's having a really great time trying to figure out how to do that. And um, but he is. And so that we can really talk about how we're are we spending our money in the right way? And some of them, you know, it's, you know, I'll be honest, there's some things we're doing that we can't stop doing. Um, and so we're having to figure that out. And we have, you know, we know we're gonna continue doing that. Like, for example, recycling may be one of those ones that, you know, somebody would say, I don't know if it fits exactly, but we're required by law to do recycling. Uh, we're required by law to keep the roads clear. Uh, I mean, I would argue it falls under traffic you know, keeping traffic moving and you know, easing traffic congestion, we leave snow and ice on the roads, that doesn't help. But I'm just giving you, I'm trying to throw out some examples that, you know, we tie each thing back to where it belongs uh, in, in to what our uh, five different directives are, and then there's 18 different outcomes. So as you think about it in light of what your committee is doing, you may want to look at that and say, oh, yeah, it's tied back to this outcome or this directive. Uh, is how we're doing that. And so, and if you have questions or you're thinking about doing something and you're not sure, I want you to feel free to reach out to me, uh, reach out to, uh, to, to whoever's the person that's assigned to your committee. You can feel free to do that. And we'll try to help walk you through that process. Uh, if we don't know, we'll. Look at, we'll, we'll take a look at it and just figure it out. And it doesn't mean it can't be budgeted. It's just we have to understand why we would do it if it's not part of our strategic plan. Any questions on the strategic plan or trying to match the budget for the moment? Are these initiatives, Steve, are longer quite significant? Well, a, a little bit. So it was, if you remember, uh, if you were here um, back in 2000, and I believe it was 19, it might have been 18, we did a community survey. Was it 19? I think it was 19. We did a community survey um, that, that was sent out by the Strategic Planning Committee. And we got an incredible response. We, we sent out 7,000 and we received 1,500 responses back, which is, I mean, anybody that does survey knows that that's just an incredible response, particularly for something like this. And so when we look at these, you'll see that typically it started out, you know, 97% of the respondents just to keep the plan said that this was important. And so, um, and then I think the next one's like 95 or 96, I can't remember, uh, or 91, uh, and then 90, and then I think it drops down to in the 80s, 80%. Still very strong numbers, but it was the top five that what the focus was on. Um, and they did combine a couple of things to, to really look at that because of the way it came out. Um, but we went back and we really then from that determined objectives or outcomes that we wanted to see, what changes did we think needed to happen based on the comments. There was, I forget, I think it was over 5,000 different comments. Uh, I only know that because I typed most of them into the survey machine because it didn't read right. And uh, I actually got to know the comments very well. And but anyway, we we took those comments seriously, and we looked at them and said, "What would the outcome be based on those comments? What was it that people were really wanting to see is different?" And so the focus that we have is on the directives, but it's really down to the outcome level. That's that's the level that we're really focusing on for how we're budgeting, um, and what we're trying. To so, you know, for example, I read the three that are on that one, but if we go to the next one, talking about supporting environmental initiatives, talks about our streams and wetlands, 
uh, appropriate trees and vegetation are reestablished and protected. Our open space is preserved and reclaimed. Storm water is managed and maintained. When you read about zoning, land development ordinances being rewritten and township center being developed and historic sites being recognized and preserved, businesses and other buildings are well maintained. I mean, look, you just go right through here and you can see it covers a ton of things that are important in our community, what the outcomes will be. So we are focusing on those uh, as our focus for each year. And if, if the budget doesn't tie to that, then we have to really explain why we're spending money on something that wasn't listed as one of the high priorities of the year. Well, we didn't concentrate on the outcomes. Yes. More so. Yes. Yeah, I think the outcomes, the goal, I mean, obviously we want to achieve the outcomes, right? I mean, I think reading all of this helps you understand what it is um, that we're trying to accomplish and it talks about the different pieces and it talks about initiatives that we would take. And so it, all of it's important, but the outcome is what we're trying to get to. And so if, if what we're doing doesn't help us move to the outcome, then we probably have to ask ourselves, why are we doing it? sense um, so the next piece with this is that you have uh, before you you should have two budget sheets one is for capital budget request form two is an operating budget the capital budget request form. Uh, we look at anything that's a project that's greater than five thousand dollars as being a capital budget, and it has to have a life. It's not listed, but it has to have a life greater than one. So, if we were going to spend, five, for example, we've been doing some stuff with gathering the circle or doing an event. It's probably going to cost about five to eight thousand dollars. That's, that's an operating cost, not a capital cost, right? Because it, it's going to last basically one night, you know, but um, but at the end of the day, we're really looking at what the impact of it is could be for a long time. But for this purpose, the asset or whatever it is that we're buying would have to be still around a year from now for it to even be considered a capital piece. Um, so and it has to be greater than 5000 so those are, there's four, there's things here that you need to fill out in regards to, you know, what the project name is, what organization uh, is doing it, um, and then the desired timing and completion of the project, because sometimes projects take more than one year, and then a description of the project, estimated cost, and then if you have an idea of where the funding is coming from, uh, if you don't, I ask you to work with Rich, on that and we get that. And then most capital projects, sorry to say, usually have an operating cost afterwards. Um, you know, for example, those speed signs that we put up, it costs about four thousand, five thousand dollars to buy. You know, you see a flash at you, you know, going 27 miles an hour to 25 mile an hour. I know some of us are going faster. Uh, but uh, but anyway, as an example, you know, that's 45, almost five thousand dollars. But Every year thereafter to maintain the software is another 1900. And so, uh, so we have to, the other part of this on the back is recording what the ongoing expense is. Um, so, for example, I'm going to pick on the tree commission this time, the Green Georgia loan. Um, if we decided to plant uh, a thousand trees next year as part of our project, it's the cost of the trees, but it's also, we have a couple of years that we have to do both. Lot of hands on maintenance up front, we should put the cost of doing that maintenance up front until they get established. If that makes sense, so that's that's the idea behind this how that works. So that's the capital. The, the operating one is a very similar uh, form, uh, again, uh, focuses on. Uh, what the, what the expense is for. Uh, there's an area for description. I will say that both of these, uh, we have electronic forms and we're gonna send those to you. 
so that you can fill them out electronically. If you're like me, uh, typing looks a lot better than my handwriting. And so uh, it's easier for Rich to decipher what I'm trying to say if I type it in. And so we ask, we'll have you do that. But I wanted you to see the form, ask any questions about how it's filled out. Uh, so one of the things that we ask uh, but you, for what committee is putting this in, and then we have the strategic plan objective listed there, and you can see that. So we want to know what strategic plan objective it ties to. Um, and then also, again, even for the operating cost, we like to know when we think the expense is going to happen. Uh, we don't budget to the month. We budget for the whole year, although the finance committee has been talking to us about budgeting maybe more uh, quarterly or so, tying back our numbers. Um, but we want an idea of when we think the expense is going to happen so that we can make sure that we have enough reserve or enough capital or, or enough funding available, not capital, but funding available to handle that expense when we think we're going to. Um, fortunately for us, we collect taxes pretty early in the year. Uh, usually by April, we're pretty, we're pretty good to go for the whole year uh, with our funding. Uh, but we, we usually need to get through April before that happens. Now, we do carry over almost every year. We have a policy that says we're carrying over 25% of our budget. Um, so we keep that there. And we do that so that we can operate the first three months of the year and not worry about whether the tax is going to come out yet. And so we Any questions on our budget worksheets? When Rich sends these out, I'll have him give you the date that they're due. He's, we've actually already started on capital and we're pretty well down the road, but if you have a capital project, feel free to get that in. Uh, and uh, we're working on the operations budget uh, right now. And we're going to present the staff's portion pretty, pretty, pretty shortly. Uh, I think we're going to present all the committee stuff in two weeks. Fifth, I think it is uh, 27th. Yeah, 27th. Thank you. So that's that's the kind of the So for the committees and for the boards and commissions, for the purpose of these, it should be one sheet for each project and or what it is that you're going to do. So wait, I haven't picked on you yet. But like you're doing the painting over at the on the, uh, the mural at the at the direct lodge, you know. So my guess is it's less than five thousand dollars. So hopefully, um, and so uh, we have less than five thousand dollars, but we need two thousand dollars worth of paint. As an example, it would be mural at Drexel Lodge, two thousand dollars worth of paint, and we would tie it to what that is, and that way we're all set. But then you may have another one for another project at Drexel Lodge. Uh, it might be that you know you wanted to line strike the parking lot. And so that would be an opportunity to have something. You wanted to put a new sign up that didn't threshold of being five thousand dollars. If it's over five thousand dollars, you want to do it in half. And it's gonna last. Bocce ball court probably falls over here on the capital project. The painting probably because it's less than five thousand dollars, even though the painting might last longer than five thousand. <laughs> Is there a minimum uh, cutoff? Yes, sir. Hours? No, I mean obviously if you if you have you might say we need five hundred dollars miscellaneous just to cover little things that we do. You know, we do some printing, we do some of this, we do some of that, but kind of put out what you think it is. I don't want $5,000 worth of miscellaneous. You know, we, we look for more specifics than that, uh, just so that the board understands what it is that we're doing. Huh? Yeah, sure. The auditors appreciate when we get detail. Any questions? Do I kind of understand the difference between capital, non-capital, and 
all that. If you're here and you're one of the committees or boards, one of the one of our um, not for profits, we're going to discuss budget a little bit differently. Good. Any questions from this group before I get started? The next stage of our meeting. I'm actually yeah. done a couple minutes early, so I got to wait a couple minutes for the rest of the folks to get here. Pick up at that point. I'm happy to answer any questions. Go over anything in more detail. These for each line item. And rule all activity. Well, it depends. I mean, if it's if it's all small dollar amounts, it's probably fine. You can put five or six items on one. Uh, if you're starting to ask for thousands of dollars here, thousands of dollars there, then I Doing a single one. I mean, if you're asking, like, let's say you want to take a group and do some kind of training, you want some money for training, uh, then I would say set aside an amount for training so we know what that is. And we can talk to the board about that specific. But if you need, you know, you're, you're doing, um, Five events throughout the year, and you're looking for just some money to do some flyers, and you don't have to say, I need flyers for this, 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 and each one be separate. You can say general flyers for activities for the year. I need Does that make sense? Is, is something like a strategic plan a capital expense? Like, I'm, did you do that internally or did you outsource that? Well, we did it internally. Um, ask me if I do that again. I'm not sure. Right. I know so, the what answer. my point um, is, and, and I'm trying to slide that over to like the zoning rewrite. Yeah. Is, is so any overwhelmed? And, we're, we're treating the zoning rewrite as a capital um, in regards to, well, this is like number three on the thing. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I, I back that up. I, I mean, I'm treating it kind of a capital in that I'm taking it from monies that are one time money. Okay. Um, for purposes when we go to depreciate, you can't depreciate a zoning or right. So absolutely uh, um, so it won't be treated as capital accounting wise, but for purposes of what we looked at as we're looking at it, um, and for example, we're looking at the land development rewrite that is part of our uh, comprehensive plan back in 2016. Wow. Yeah, it's been several years, but one of the things we were looking at was getting this the, the land development rewrite done as well. And so we're actually putting in the budget for next year for that. Uh, and again, that's it, it, I'm looking at it coming from capital dollars because it's kind of a one time expense. It's not something we do every year. We may we may not rewrite the land development or the zoning again for another 20, 30 years. And so we'll take it more from there than the budget $60,000 each or out of uh, out of the operating expense. And then next year, we end up with this extra 60,000. And so it's more trying to make sure that we aren't, oh, I try to keep things that are reoccurring. And that doesn't mean everything is 100% that way. You know, you might do something like what Wade's project is, we're probably not gonna, the bathrooms over at Drexel Lodge every year, but it's not something that I look at. That we'll probably do another project similar to that someplace else. And so those, those are just reoccurring small projects. But when you start getting into things where you're starting to spend tens of thousands of dollars, if it's one time, I do kind of treat it as a one time expense. And often we put it with the capital budget as something. Other questions? I don't know who else was talking. Paul's walking in right now. So if we can wait for Paul to get in, then I'll get started on the next part.
what committee you're with or what organization you're with and how that relates to the council. Right, this way, just to be clear, when do you start the clockwise? I'm going to go to I like that parks and recreation. Rich Enow, Marple Newtown Recreation. Uh, we are a jointer of both Marple and Newtown. George Sherrits, Public Works Director of Newtown. Mike Lynch, Zoning Vice Chair. Dan Bolanin, uh, Services Director of the Arts. Now, Steve Neese, I think everybody knows me. If you don't, Make sure you get a chance to speak to yeah, because sure. I've done a poor job at my job at this point, if that's the case. Um, all right, so this next hour, um, what I want to spend is about 15 minutes or so discussing upcoming events that any one of the organizations and or committees or boards has um, that you are interested in having additional help with, looking for volunteers. Or if there's something that your committee or board or um, nonprofit is doing that is benefiting the township, just share that briefly so that we all kind of have on the same page uh, what's happening. And so I'm going to start back on this side. And I don't know that zoning has a whole lot other than hearing all the zoning cases, but I don't know if you had something that you want to share for the group. Um, I think we're trying to correct a lot of the ills that maybe a lot of the residents are upset with, especially in the Heights Florida Park. I, I will say our, our zoning group, they've uh, brought in a new solicitor. Uh, they've done a lot to try to make some changes that they're having. We're in the process of rewriting the zoning, which will help them tremendously. I think this, this week coming up, you have seven cases, is that right? Yeah. Um, and so, which is ridiculous. We should have seven cases a year, not seven cases a month. And part of that's just because our zoning is such that we have allowed so many things over the years that it's that we have a lot of that coming in. So hopefully, as we rewrite that, 
my goal would be that we would have literally three or four or five zoning cases a year, uh, not a month. So basically, I'm trying to put them out of business. So, <laughs> <laughs> not that they would complain after last month. <laughs> Are they trying to beat the new zoning? They trying to I, I think that's what's happening, right, honestly, because yeah. we're getting a, well, we're some getting a lot of commercial application. Yeah, some of them are. And interestingly enough, though, if some people would wait, they actually wouldn't even have to go before them. We're actually changing changing the zoning to accommodate some of the things that happen all the time uh, that we're getting requests for, yeah. like fences in the front yard and how that you know give an option and let them do it, and then. Need to go to zoning and trying to do something. So, yeah. I didn't ask Suzanne, did you have anything to do about no. talk more about you? George, do you do anything coming up? Not really. I mean, we have a we have a very full plate come September, October, November. Uh, it's it's a it's a busy time in public works, but the seven people that I work with and I really interface with almost every board and commission here. And, and try to back you up and, and help you in what you're doing. So I, I think the key is going to be hearing the rest of the table. Yep. Although I have a pretty good idea of a lot of it. So our uh, fall programming season begins early next month. Uh, highlights, I guess, would be the, our competitive swim team, Triton, COVID. Um, I would refer you to our website and recreation.org, uh, listing of all of our program offerings, and I can help you guys promoting anything. Let me know. That's great. I, I'm just going to ask, before you speak, if you reach up and just make sure you turn your mics on, I see some of them are still red. So, yeah. so we, um, we're having a concert uh, September 18th. It's the same as the uh, Gather in the Circle event and uh, it's for, um, it's Walk for the Wounded. It's uh, Operations First Response is what it's called. And they, all the money goes to veterans and or their families. So um, I think the township is, is helping them with, with some resources and they're, they're pretty organized so they have their own resources, but they've asked for some volunteers from the community. So six is the number that uh, we kind of agreed to. I don't know if I could send something out to the group and ask, send it out to your committees and, and look for help. In addition to that, they've asked for if the fire department um, and the auxiliary or whatever could come dressed in uniform at a certain time and collect donations and then give it to them that they would only need to be there like an hour. Also looking from the fire department, potentially the fire police uh, oh, right. to assist with this event. Okay. I'll give you my email too. Or at me. All right, thank <laughs> you. Sure. So I have a thank question you. about that. Yeah. When was this originally, we at Gather at the Circle worked very hard not to, not to conflict with anything. And we didn't, originally this uh, concert for Garza Lodge Park was supposed to be, I think, yeah, so the, if there was a mix up in the day, that was my fault. I apologize. Um, when did it? When did the 18th become the day? Uh, I, it's always been the 18th. I might have misspoke and said it was the 12th at some point. But, you know, it's, it's too late now. You know, they have four, you know, two national acts coming in. I understand. I mean, and I think Steve, you spoke earlier today that to Lyndon McIsaac about changing our date. I mean. This is going to be, a, I mean, I don't, what we're trying to do is put the community together, not draw it apart. And, and this having two big events on the same day is just it's problematic. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's potentially a challenge, but I also think it's potentially not a challenge. I suspect that you might have some people that would cross over and be a both. My understanding is this event is actually more He's not being focused that here in Newtown, the walk for the wounded is being focused as a much broader piece um, for veterans and their families. Uh, I, I think it's kind of an appreciation for them. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, it's like Delco or, or uh, Greater Philadelphia. It's area. a Greater Philadelphia area where Gather in the Circle is really focused. It, it, I 
it's my understanding Sunset of the Circle is focused really on Newtown okay. and, and local. Um, and so I suspect you might have some people that would choose to do one and not the other, but I think that you're going to find, um, and I, I could be wrong, this was a conversation I had with Linda earlier today, I think, I think you're going to find that you're still going to have a really good crowd that comes out to the um, circle. I think After it's going to be sunset. Is that what right. I call it? Circle. Uh, circle. 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 Always one calls. I don't. I, I mean, I can mix up the two. The circle of sundown. Um, I, I think that when people see what when that advertising goes out, and and for that, I I will be a little bit surprised if I feel like it's competing. Um, I think there would be very specific folks who would go to the walk for the wounded thing. That's like an all day event. Uh, very different group who would come out in the evening for that. I could be wrong. Um, I'm hoping actually that it works out well. I, I will say that when I got your date, I did let Linda know early on. My understanding was a little bit different of what this event was regarding Walk for the Wounded. I thought it was all people from out of town. And, and and that was the focus. I think there is some now looking for people to come, but its focus is all the way across Delaware. So I'll well. be there. We need five more volunteers. That's there will be five less people. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Fortunately, um, and again, from Public Works, and we're not thrilled that there's two events going on. But fortunately, there's only a very short time that they overlap each other because the the circle event is is a little later. And the concert is a little earlier in the day, yeah, and it kind sucks. of wraps up where the, theoretically you could get people leaving the one and going to the well, other. Yeah, I was going to recommend that because I work at marketing. This is a perfect opportunity at your event, promote their event. Say, hey, folks, while you're done here, why don't you go over and visit this part of town, see a whole other part of Newtown Square, and you know, meet up with people and you know, connect. Right? And it's a great connection because if you think about it, Similar types of people. You know, it's not like one's a rap concert, another one's a um, older person event. Um, I guess people, all young people. I guess people like my age can like. Right, but you get my point. It's similar, right. and it actually you can benefit each other. Right. Oh, I'll ask them to announce that at the EMC. And I'm I'm sorry. We have I have one more request, and that's um, when we do the mural, we're going to have a lot of paint and a lot of cleanup. So. You know we don't want to pollute now we're going you know we don't we don't know what to do exactly uh so i guess we're looking at you bruce to help I'll steer us i'll do some investigation and uh all right get back to you i had trouble getting rid of paint out of my garage so we're, we're looking to it for you and i guess hey, we should probably know before we purchase it yeah cool. wait actually i think the kind of paint that we're getting i'm not worried we can we can deal with it oh okay all right. don't they sell a quagga put in there and just throw away the trash I think that there yeah. is something, yeah. Yeah. And that's, I'm sorry, I took more than three minutes. No. <laughs> uh, so for the fire company, um, we have decided to push our dedication back to the spring just because we are so unsure with COVID and what's going on. Uh, but we are hoping to still get our donors in at some point. There was a special building fund. So anyone that donated to that, we were going to invite them to kind of a preview night. Uh, but as far as fundraisers, we're doing our flea market uh, September 26th at the shopping center. We're facing a similar challenge because apparently Marple's Hero Scholarship Fund at Delaware County Community College is the same day as well. But we're hoping that people, people are going to one, they'd come to both since they're kind of close together. So if anyone knows anyone who is looking for a table at the flea market, they can go on our website. And we're going to be spending the fall uh, putting together a um, capital campaign for sponsorship of the rooms at the fire company. So if anyone knows anyone that does that type of work, we would be thrilled to get their advice. What are the hours for the flea market? I believe it's 9 to 3, uh, and it's September 26th. The only thing we have going for us is we have a rain date. It's October 3rd. So if the weather's terrible, they'll put it on the website and call it off. Do you have flyers for that? 
Yes, they do. So do you want to send me one? I can sure. send it on the website. Sure, I'll get um Donna, our legal delivery president, to get okay. me one and we'll send it to you. Thank you, Suzanne. I would just mention uh, also that uh, we, I know the fire company is running around in a new ladder truck now. I understand it's actually working and up and running. And so, uh, but that's a great, and I only bring that up because it's a great example of the township working with an organization. Uh, we purchased the fire truck uh, this time uh, with taxpayer dollars uh, to help meet the needs of the fire company. One of the things that if you don't know is that uh, the number of volunteers working in the fire company has dropped by almost, uh, I forget what percentage, but basically from 300,000 down to about 30,000 across the state of Pennsylvania, if that gives you any idea of what the change that is. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things we're very fortunate here in Newtown is that we have a pretty active volunteer fire company that is, able to continue to provide service. They do have some paid folks during the day to help meet needs. Uh, and I think we do some on the, uh, in the evening from time to time or something. I don't know the whole schedule, but- if Somebody's getting married or something in the yeah, firehouse. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we, <laughs> they, 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 but they've, they've done a really great job of making sure it's staffed mostly by volunteers. And we benefit as taxpayers. Just to give you an idea, I always take whatever the police budget is, and that's what it would cost us to do a fire company at least. Um, and just to give you an idea, the police budget's right around $4 million. If we were to go to a paid fire company, we would be looking at probably about $4 million uh, that we would have to do that. And to give you an idea, we collect in property taxes about 5.5 million. Uh, so if you think about what that would mean if we had to add a volunteer fire company uh, to our budget, it would almost mean doubling our taxes. So uh, I'm very thankful for what this group does. And I have to thank the supervisors and you, Steve and Rich, because I know it was not an easy task to get done, but this is the first time in 104 years that the township has purchased a truck and it was the biggest one they could have bought. It was over a million dollars and that's very normal these days. So uh, we could never have taken on we have a $3 million mortgage now that we never had before, and we could have never replaced that truck this year. So thank you, Steve. Jim Lanzalotto in the Finance Committee. Uh, our role, we're a new group, uh, and our role is to serve as an advisor to um, uh, Stephen and to Rich, uh, and also to the Board of Supervisors around budget, finance, and other issues like that. Uh, still finding our way a little bit. Uh, not the best organized team, given my role as chair. I was, obviously, I was not in the room at the time. They asked me to do it. it seems like it's worked out okay so far. Uh, but, we're, but we believe our role, and we understand it to be, uh, one to advise. Because we have a lot of folks building budgets and things like that. And the group we have is a, it's a great group of folks, very cross-functional with folks who are CPAs, finance, legal, business. It's a good, good board as far as that makeup is concerned. And I think that... Uh, We've gotten so far in the first four or five meetings. It's actually probably more than that right now. But the first several meetings has been um, really reviewing things, advising, recommending things to look into. For example, one was, uh, you know, what's the what's our IT security? So all the hacking that's going on and the ransom nonsense and things like that. Just to get an understanding what's going on, understanding what's going on in case we have any recommendations. That's the kind of stuff that I had nothing to do with that. Somebody on the team had a great idea. So. Or can I take credit for it? You can take it. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. But that's the kind of stuff. And uh, you know, especially as we get into budget season, nice thing about having a bunch of CPAs on the team is they have a really good team. So we are on the Shade Tree Commission and we are a newly appointed committee as well. And I have to defer to George because we are just forming our committee and our agenda. And, I was out the last couple of meetings because it's my busy season and it's just coming to an end. So I'll be able to have a little more time on this. But I don't believe we have any capital projects, do we? Uh, actually, I'm the one who's been attending the meetings. Okay. Um, and <laughs> okay. I haven't, I haven't turned it over to another staff member yet. So I, we're actually still looking at some, actually, some mortgage rewrites uh, in your committee um, okay. and trying to uh, address a couple of issues of concern, particularly related around Meredith Streets. In the township, I that. Uh, that was a big issue. Um, 
uh, and also addressing, we had to kind of define what a street tree was. We had a definition uh, that was that was given to us in the ordinance, but when we started to carry it out, uh, we, we the right away, depending on the road, is different in every location in the town, and so we come up with a, a just a basic measurement that it will be as a recommendation to the board if it's within 30 feet of the curb or the front of the house, whichever shorter, that would be the, the area. And so uh, looking at shade trees and, and tree trees and that light. And so some minor changes they're making, but they're also doing, they've come up with a list of trees uh, that, that you know are uh, native trees to the area and also uh, recommendations in that way. So it's, it's, it's a group that's incredibly exciting to work with, kind of like the finance group, they're new, they jumped in and they're really taking on some new responsibilities and they're doing well. Good. I want to just uh, say a little bit about the farmer's market and then I might let Paul take over with the circle at sundown. Um, the farmer's market's going till October 1st. That will be our last market, I think. I'm getting a lot of pressure to continue it through October. So we might need a committee meeting about that, um, but it's going really well. I just need people to keep coming out and shopping and sharing stuff on social media. I know most of the community groups have uh, had a community table week so far. I know Tina's is coming up and it's it's been a really good way to let people know what's what your committees are up to and what's coming up. Such a cool thing. So whoever's idea that was. <laughs> I'm probably Lori Costgroves. I'm I'm not sure whose idea that was, but yeah, it's been really great. Was your farmer at the farmers market? Thank you. For oh, I'm sorry. And, and, uh, I thought guys. you meant the community table no, the specifically. Yeah. yeah, it's it's gone really well, and I th I'm hoping that as people get back from vacation and as the weather calms down a little bit, we'll have uh, more and more people out there. So our vendor list keeps growing. I get new inquiries every day, so. The location is really good, Pam. It is. It's, it's much a beautiful easier than setting. Stories. Yeah, and all, all of the vendors say that too, Suzanne. They yeah. really they love the shade and they love the library program being out there. Um, they love to see the kids, and it's it, that brings more people too. But it's just it's such a beautiful setting, and all the volunteers from the church are amazing. So yeah, and it's, it, it's amazing how all the pieces have come together. For our I first love to year, hear yeah. stories of people who say they get home. And their son or their daughter say, We need to go to the farmer's market. And I mean, to me, that's encouraging, right? You know, it's not just right. the adults that want to be there, it's the kids as well. So. I've also had several vendors that have dropped other markets to do ours exclusively and have said that they'll be back next year. So really? we have to keep it going. <laughs> it's been really good. Let's pull us on down. Uh, should oh, we? Want to I want to, else? Uh, perhaps next year, with what Pam and I are talking about. Is I might have a more of a of a role in the day to day of the farmers market, and then Pam would would focus on arts and crafts. And what we really want to sort of see if we can get going, and this comes really Arlene from Angela doing the storytelling, where where we could kind of promote the idea of arts and crafts and let residents of different age groups find something interesting going on, and uh, you know whether it be faux painting or who knows what it might be. But, you know, that could be, Pam has sort of a background workshop, in that and a workshop kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that could be all sort of exciting. So that's what we're thinking of for 2022. Um, so circle at sunset. So this <laughs> close of news at this uh, sunset. <laughs> the circle at sundown. sundown. Once the uh, advertising gets going, maybe everybody will figure out the name. So this, <laughs> this pulls for many different threads. Um, you know, I'd like to focus first on the idea of treats. Um, and you, the MS4 has come back, according to what Steve has told us. The MS4, that means the Commonwealth has agreed that uh, uh, one of our remediation uh, offers, or, or what we suggested, we be Newtown Township, is that we plant a thousand trees by the end of 2026 on, along those lines. And that has been accepted. And so, we at Gather in the Circle, we'd like to promote the idea of, of residents to plant a native tree in their garden, in their private garden. And from that idea came a pop-up park. So there's a, a sort of the nucleus of this is gonna be a pop-up park. We're gonna have three trees. Uh, they're red maples, as far as I know. Uh, you, we could have discussions, should they always be the same or should it be three different species? 
and they would be labeled and it would be for residents to consider planting a tree on their property because there's no way that we can get to a thousand just in municipal and around the streets. Um, and the second, so this pulls from the tree, Shade Tree Commission and it, it asks the question, we should be ready to start trumpeting trees in a big, in a big way in the fall. EAC, Shade Tree, uh, us, library. I mean, we could really go on a huge campaign about trees. Uh, the second thing that it pulls from is retail. And retail's having a really, really, really tough time. Um, and the, the, the uh, Newtown Square Business Association has lost a few people due to, they just closed their doors because they couldn't make it work any longer. Um, what we're seeing is that St. Albans Circle needs to be reimagined and revitalized, so to speak. And we'd like to increase the pedestrian traffic around St. Albans Circle. Um, First, for just having fun, but secondly, we'd like people to start using the circle and shop and patronize the stores and patronize the shops uh, uh, like uh, Bunny Hair and then going on to uh, Hassie's and uh, the running place, which is, does have a good patronage. But we're looking to stimulate shopping to keep the retail moving forward and not let it slip behind. Um, and so this is going to take the, the guise of the street party. We're going to close most of Chapel Road. We're going to close half of St. Albans Circle. And on the Chapel Road piece, there is the Pablo Park. That's a little bit of a lawn that's between parking for Nicholas and Sebastian. And it's also a, a piece of lawn. It's, it's the dividing line between Nicholas and Sebastian parking and Remax parking. And we have the approval for that to be the pop-up park. To make it interesting, we, uh, we and that's really Linda McIsaac, who's our chair, and she comes in and out of the country sometimes. Um, she went to a, a beer vendor. Uh, actually, the Leonard Altieri, Supervisor Leonard Altieri, introduced us to this beer vendor, and it's, he's called Trouble's End. And uh, we're going to have a beer Tent, right on Chapel Road. And then you can sip your beer in this pop up park. So, so it should be kind of interesting. I mean, let's see how this all plays out. We're, we're going to, instead of having just uh, traditional tables and chairs, we're going to have these great huge spools that the cable TV or cables come on. And we're going to have uh, uh, stools. And it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a different uh, an optic. We're going to have uh, three or four food vendors. That's Luigi and Giovanni, different Indian cuisine, fresco. Um, maybe Ray Azteca. Maybe Ray Azteca, but there's somebody else. Sugary. There. And the sugary is going to have an ice cream cart, but there's another restaurant. House cup coffee? No, it's no, not house cup, no. but the coffee guy from the market. I didn't know that, but that's okay. fine. <laughs> We're still working on it. So um, that's kind of what. And this is going to go between the hours of five and eight. Setup is between four to five. Uh, Teardown is between eight and nine. Daylight savings time is getting a little bit darker early. So the last hour between seven and eight, we're going to need electric lights. Somehow we're going to buy them. And we'd like those clear big bulbs that you string along. And if there might be, we have to have a tent for each of the food purveyors. So uh, they might have some electrical, and then we might have electrical at the pop-up park, and there's going to be electrical in the beer garden somehow, and these are all generators and extension. So that's about, I mean, you want to add some more? What are they? I don't think I have anything to add okay. to that. No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. EEAC. Um, Short term, we have a couple of things. One, we're planning a couple of rain gardens on September 17th and 18th. Uh, on October 2nd, we're conducting a bird walk as part of the uh, Bird Town certification process. On October the 15th, we have a tree planting uh, over here in Gable Park where we plan to plant about uh, 60 or so native trees. And uh, we also have um, some work we're doing in the area of uh, community outreach. Uh, we think there's an opportunity to reduce 
total CO2 output by going to the community and asking them to take some actions. Uh, and so we're doing some community outreach in the form of Facebook and attending all the various events. Um, we're also kind of changing because of the relatively new uh, status of the tree commission. The, uh, the uh, trails commission used to be stuff that we did and that, now that is moving. And with parks and rec so active, we'll probably get out of the tree planting business on parks. We may facilitate funding of that activity, but uh, we wouldn't lead the effort to plant trees and parks or to make changes to, to parks. So we're looking forward to working with everybody in advisory role with issues having to do with uh, anything that has environmental uh, implications. I'm with the Planning Commission. Um, you know, we have our meetings once a month. Uh, you know, for the most part, you could encourage people to come. We we don't get a lot of public attending our meetings, and you know, sometimes it really is helpful getting their input, what their concerns are. Sometimes they see something we don't see, so that's probably the best way. If you know, people express concern about what's happening, tell them they can attend the Planning Commission meeting. So other than that, or come yourselves. But when are the planning meetings? Third Thursday? Fourth Thursday. Fourth Thursday. Okay. Um, first thing I want to say about the library is these slides that you're seeing, I make those slides and I'd be happy to put any of, and all of your events on the slides. And they're in the library, they're here, they can go upstairs. So it's no... I would be happy to make something for you if you just send me your details, but I won't just take it upon myself to do it unless you ask me because I don't know what, you know. Although I did do the farmer's market without anybody asking because <laughs> I went to this table, the community table and did it. And after that, I was like, we gotta let, make sure everybody knows because it's really great over there. Um, so I just wanted to get that out there for you guys. You can email me, whatever. Um, but what the library's been up to is basically getting back into the library business. We lost, um, several employees decided not to stay during the pandemic. So we've been building back our staff, building back our hours um, and the programs and things are, are starting to build. And um, we just would like to see you uh, come in and check out some books at this point. And don't forget us um, when we send out our annual appeal that's coming out September, October. Um, we really could use your help too there. You know, I'm reminded, you know, we have, we have, you know, the library, the fire department, we gather in a circle group. Uh, that's pretty much it right now that's here. You know, th these folks are here not because uh, they, you know, in regards to, they're not appointed by the township, they, they function, function under their own. And so I, I'm a really appreciative, appreciative of these fact that these non profits are making an impact in our community. That's why they're here at the table um, helping us. We, we do support financially uh, those that are sitting around the table um, and, and we continue to do so because we couldn't do this without them. And so I'm, I'm very thankful. And, and it is a reminder that unless people are helping to give to those campaigns and things like that, um, the need from the township on the tax side gets greater. And so, do encourage your, your fellow neighbors that it does make a difference. Um, because if not, in order to keep providing these services, we would have to increase taxes. And so um, I, I just say that and uh, just know that it's part of who we are and it's part of the DNA of who our township is and we need these services. I think they make us a better community. When we look at the strategic plan, every one of them is focus of who we are in our and so uh, just like the committees that serve us so I, I thank them. Um, the next thing I want to cover uh, real quickly is we have a form yours is probably a little bit smaller I think everybody's is for uh, eight and five, uh, seven, four, 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 four. Uh, on, on your desk uh, this is uh, the board back in May uh, 
passed a resolution that we were going to become a sustainable community in Pennsylvania. And we said that we were going to do that by participating in the Pennsylvania Sustainable PA uh, Community uh, Certification Program. And so, as you can see, as you start going through this, uh, I think it's 130 different lines uh, that, that we're looking at. We are not going to do all 130. I'm going to tell you up front. There's some of that, that you know, they start talking about, um, you know, some of the housing things and some of those kind of things that we don't really get involved in uh, very much. Uh, but some of them, we, we definitely will get involved with. In. I, along with the staff, but uh, a lot of it was me assigning, I went through and assigned uh, potentially groups and or committees uh, to uh, be a part and be responsible for some areas. And so like the first, I uh, think the first eight or so, I assigned the finance. Um, and, and then you can see uh, kind of what's in there in that way, what some of those are. Uh, but on different sections of the page, there's different groups that are assigned based on what it is. Um, I've asked uh, at the bottom of the second page and top of the third page. Uh, I've got Newtown Square and Bloom Mall is potentially being involved. Uh, I've got Gather in the Circle is being involved. Um, so it's it's committees and it's it's not for profits in our community property. Uh, I've also looked at uh, we at the time we went through and based on who we thought was going to be here, we assigned um, uh, staff members uh, to this. Uh, I'm also looking at uh, and we assigned departments who really had. Going back, I'll probably have to look at some of these. We've decided not to hire a communications coordinator. Uh, we're actually going to do that with a third party. Um, by doing that with a third party, I'm going to have to look at who's going to take that role on uh, to head up some of these things for us. Um, but we will be looking at that. But this is a big project. Uh, my goal is to go through between now and the end of the year and see the things that we've already done. And so if you can look at your area and say, yeah, we've accomplished this, or no, we haven't accomplished that. Um, and Or if you see something that I didn't assign to you, and you said, oh, I think we really have done that by doing what we did, um, we've been able to do that. Um, I would ask that you take a look and let us know um, so we can do a first run through scoring. I, I think the staff and I did kind of a run through scoring, and we came up that we might already be kind of at a bronze level uh, in this. Obviously, that's not where we want to end up, but it may be a place that we could start and say, here's where we are, and then we would set goals over the next couple of years to achieve these in light of our strategic plan. So we want to work in conjunction. We don't want to get separated. We don't want to end up with so many different programs we lose focus. This is our main driving document as a township. This is a it's kind of a subsidiary of what we're doing that fall, I think falls very nicely at what we're doing here at Strategic Plan. And so not everything fits, but a lot of things fit. Um, you know, as we start looking at that. Particularly as you start, if you start really reading what the strategic plan says, and then you look at some of these, and you go, it makes sense. It's who we are, it's part of what we should be doing, um, and uh, that way. So we're going to spend a significant amount of time on this over the next couple months, and into the next year, and in the next couple of years. So I have dedicated uh, a staff member to helping us focus on this. And um, Suzanne is kind of transitioning uh, from having to keep me straight uh, all every day. She's still going to have that kind of responsibility, but not quite to the same level. Uh, Steve back there is going to be helping to keep me straight. Uh, and, uh, but Suzanne is going to kind of transition as she has been transitioning over to doing HR for the township. She's also going to be heading up our sustainability project. Um, and she's going to be our main key person. So as you start looking at this and where this fits for you and your committee and what you think we need to do. Um, so this, what I will say is all of these, there's two aspects to it. What are we doing it, right? And the second thing is, can we put some kind of way to be proof that we're doing it? 
And so on our website, we're going to create an area that's our sustainability page. And it might be multiple pages because this is multiple areas. Uh, and there'll be links on our web page or a link to our web page that will show. So, like the first one talks about the higher professional staff uh, employed and retained in the area of budgeting and finance. And so I told Reggie, yes, he will become professional. And um, but, but we'll, we'll put together basically um, a like a resume or CD that kind of gives an idea of who we are, uh, that staff that's doing that. And then that'll be a link on the website. Um, but then we'll get down to things like, um, you know, reviewing our trends annually. Uh, but I wanted to pick one that we do. Like, for example, it says 10 to 5 to 10% of the operating funds are covered over year to year. We have a policy already in place that says we'll have 25%. That way we can cover three months. And I want to tell you, last year, when we went into last year, nobody had an idea about COVID, right? But when COVID happened on March, I want to say that 90% of the managers I talked to who do what I do were in a panic mode because all of a sudden they were concerned about taxes coming in. They had EIT, they had earned income tax. Last year was a terrible year for earned income tax. And if you were in Upper Marion uh, with the mall who has all that business privilege tax, I, they don't even have like property taxes or earned income tax. Well, they depend almost all on that. And that dried up. And a lot of managers were in panic mode. We were able to sit and say, we've got three months to make this. And we can sit down and we can start making good decisions. And in that period of time, we found out that property taxes still kept coming in. We, we didn't end up having to lay off any level, and lots of municipalities did. And now they're trying to get people back, and we can't. So, I mean, it's a policy that was in place that I believe last year was the difference between us really trying to figure out how we were going to stay healthy. And we didn't have to do that. We just started, we, we were able to start acting and start making decisions and being wise when we started. So, it's, it's those kind of things that we put into play already. So I don't have a problem saying, yes, we've done that, right? Um, you know, if you don't know, uh, Rich and his team uh, have put together and have last year, not last year, but the year before, won the budget award. Um, and, you know, they've applied again this year. And I think there's a good chance, you know, it's hard to change all of that. But that's a big deal. I mean, there's a few, com there's a few communities that have that. Not only are we there, but we're also our up our I mean, down further. Our police are um, accredited both nationally and and statewide. I mean, so we're doing a lot of things to move towards sustainability already. But there's a lot of things in here that we can implement to it's into particularly. There's a lot I've already presented a lot of this to Bruce and his group because EAC probably has the biggest chunk of stuff to look at. Uh, and probably the area that we're not the strongest in. And so, you know, the, the, this is about applying those things. And so, anyway, this is a big piece of who we are moving to be. We want to be a sustainable community, not only in environmental wise, but also that we're everything. Uh, one of the things that our staff is looking at right now, uh, and I'm planning, is we're looking at succession. You know, I had this rude awakening one day that, um, in the next five to 10 years, a major part of our staff is going to be gone. And I was like, holy cow. And it was like, I had to wake up and start saying, who's going to be here to take over and carry on what we've started. Uh, and so we're, we're actively looking at that. The board took an action just recently, promoted John Rule to captain in the police department to make sure that, you know, because we knew the lieutenant was retiring. And so we wanted to make sure that we were in a place uh, that we were prepared to carry on and to know that probably in not too many future years, the chief will retire. Um, and, you know, and I'm not getting any younger. Uh, and so we are looking at all of those kind of things. And so uh, all of that, when we look at sustainability, it's, it's are we, you wise on our resources, finances and personnel and all of those kind of things. And then are we really wise on our environmental resources? 
and I give a lot of credit to the EAC. They're the ones that really started us moving in this direction um, and really helped us to get to a spot where the board was ready to take this step. But this is an important part of who we are. We want to make this uh, piece. So this is going to be a focus that we're going to spend a lot of time on over the next several months. I'm going to be bringing this up to every committee and asking them to really participate in this in one area and what they're doing in those areas. Uh, so just know that. Um, and I'm I can't, I can't make you all do it, but I'm going to be twisting your arm to try to make you all do it. <laughs> but Suzanne's going to be the one that's really kind of helping us to kind of guide through that process. She's really organized, and so she will help us pull all the things together that we need to do. And um, so um, I just need to get some things off of her plate so she can focus on that. So that's the goal. Uh, hopefully within the next month or so we'll do that, and then you'll see this really kind of take off in this area. And I would like you to start with your committees looking at um, so I've gone over uh, for my one group. Is there for the non for the folks that are either committees or boards? Um, is there any questions that you have? Uh, I've gone over. I apologize. I was trying to hold this in just an hour and a half. <laughs> I have a question. So being, being new to this whole scene, uh, am I allowed to go back to my members and discuss this? Or does oh, absolutely. It absolutely. It's actually going to be on your agenda whether you want to go okay. back and discuss it's it or not. Okay, it's an agenda. Not. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, it's, I didn't want to do it outside of, we have to do it inside the yeah. formality of the township. Well, you, you're welcome to do it inside the formality of the township. Real quickly, if I can. So if you're going to discuss something with other members of your committee, particularly something like this, right. that could potentially be an action item, I'm asking you to do it one or two at a time, right. never in groups of three. Right. Okay. Because if you get into, well, I say groups of three, I think you guys are seven, so you are four. Um, but if you are a five member board or less, or five member board, you're, if you, the minute you hit three, you have a quorum. If you are discussing something in a group of three and you need to do it publicly, you need to advertise that you're doing it and you need to allow the public to attend and so that's very important so i don't want any of us having to go to jail or having to pay fines it's not worth it uh so you know if you discuss it you want to discuss it one-on-one -on -one and just say hey this is coming this is what we're thinking about but full discussion and making a commitment of what you're going to do in your group to help move us forward in this area that has to be done if, at a public meeting of one of your committees Going Are all the uh, boards fully staffed or like fully manned in terms of all uh, at this point? I think all the boards are fully manned. Obviously, I would make note um, we are getting ready to come up at the end of the year and going into next year. I'm sure the board's going to be wanting us to advertise looking for new board members. Uh, almost every board, I don't think there's a board that wouldn't have somebody drop off this year because we have. Typically, boards that have five have at least one member go off every year. Seven, I think we have one or two members that go off every year. Uh, I think everybody else is high. Uh, so we talk about succession planning, right? That's, yes. that's important. You yes. Know, like volunteers. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, so just get people like build your bench. Um, yeah. Yep. And maybe the township supervisors can make that a priority or something. Yeah. Like, like see more involved. Yeah. Yep. Hard to get that. Less gray hair. <laughs> I don't know. I Which comes with. I get it frosted. Which comes with. <laughs> Any other questions from my boards and commissions? I want to thank you for being here. I am asking the not for profits to please stay. I want to talk about budget and a few other things with you before we go. Um, and Rich, I'm going to get you to hang out for yourself next because yours is a little different. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. We'll do this every other month. Going forward. Great. Should I stay or I don't need to stay? Uh, actually, I'd like you to stay. Okay, that's right. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's what I was thinking. That has to go in five minutes. You're running it. So you get her for the next four. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you, Tom. It's good to see you. Yeah. I'm going to see you. Thank you very much. Someday very well at your meeting. September. Whatever. Yeah. No.
That's when we did the dots. Oh, for the, yeah. for the trees. Yeah. So, so, so as our committees are leaving, I want to be I want to be mindful of your time and I want to try to finish up very quickly. Um, I want to go through a couple quick things. Um, and I will I promise uh, to I'm actually going to do this in a shorter uh, way than I intended. You had before you, if you were not here when I went through this, this is our strategic plan uh, for the township. When we budget, we budget out of a strategic plan. We use that as our basis. And so if you're going to be asking the township to give money uh, to you, what I would like for you to do is look at the strategic plan and particularly look at the area where there's the outcomes. If you'll see uh, every area where there's an outcome, there's an arrow and it says expected outcome. Yeah, I try to make it as simple as possible for us. Um, and we've done that on every page, uh, starting on page 13. And it goes back, I think, for about page 20. Um, and uh, well, actually goes back to page 18. Right? Uh, but there's outcomes in most cases, there's three or four under each directive. And so, if you can look in to say, this is how we use the monies that we ask for to help better the community, and that we're achieving this outcome in doing so, it gives me a lot of power when I ask for those dollars. So, for a couple of, or actually three of you, we've been supporting you ongoing. And it's a quarterly payment, and we're going to continue to get that going forward. We're not changing that. Um, what I would ask, though, is that you please still, uh, from your standpoint, fill out these, depending on whether you're asking for capital dollars for us to buy something. So I know, like the fire department, in another couple of years, is going to need us to buy another truck. Um, and so, uh, you know, you might fill that out and tell me that in 2025, we want the next truck, and so that I can start looking at how we start planning for another, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar purchase or whatever like that. Um, you know, uh, you might have a need in your area. I know, uh, Rich, your area, you guys kind of have your own budget and do everything separately, still, and so does the library, and so does the fire department. But, if you're just wanting us to continue to support your operation, you can just fill out this form. You don't have to let, you don't have to give us everything that you're doing, but you kind of explain how, like, what percentage of the budget we are that you're asking us to contribute so that we understand. And I want to be able to explain to folks that we're making a positive difference, and, you know, where that is. And, you know, you know, some areas like Rich, we might be 25% of your budget of what you're. Recreation is, I don't know for sure, but I think for the fire department, we might be 70% of their operating piece. Uh, and over the library, I don't know, 50%? Uh, at least, I would so think 70 to 80. 80. 70 to 80. So you can see we're a big portion of that. But it, it helps for the board to see that you're dependent upon what we do. That makes a difference in the program. For those that are more like, you got square and blue, uh, gather in a circle. Um, trying to think what else is represented in the group. I guess the business association really hasn't been asked. Us for but Newtown Square and Bloom and Gather in a Circle in particular. If you're asking us to continue to support what you're doing, um, and I'm assuming you are, and I would want you to, I'm, not, I'm expecting you to turn something in. I'm not, a, you know, that's my expectation. Um, so on the on the capital. So for instance, water rate from the hanging baskets. That would be this. That would be operation, not capital. Okay. Uh, but if you were asking us to invest and buy new baskets, and the baskets were over five thousand dollars, then it might be capital. If that makes sense. But if it's if it's operationally to provide a service or to um, or to provide you cash to do something. Uh, for example, I know uh, we usually pay, I think, for the Newtown or for the, uh, the, the uh, American Bloom uh, membership. membership. 
then that would be on here. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I would do a separate page for all these yeah. different things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for gather in the circle, um, we we kind of done a we, last year we just set aside a dollar amount, but like if you have a specific dollar amount that you're thinking about for 2022, um, you know I would want you to kind of detail out what it is that you're wanting from us. You know, if you're going to do the farmers market and you need some money for the farmers market. That in here, if you're going to do an event, put the money, put that on here. We'll decide where it comes from, whether it's a one time expense or whether it's an ongoing. I'm arguing that at this point, you were a one time expense this year, but going forward, you're probably not. You're, you're probably going to need some financial support going forward. So, for our purposes, use the, the uh, operating budget? Yes, yeah. for yours is the operating budget. Unless you had a capital project that you were asking us to make specific <laughs> I mean, I know you have been doing capital projects, but I think we've been taking that out of our reserves. Yeah. You know, so from, from your point, I would uh, expect it to be. So, can I interrupt? Um, if we're doing the hanging baskets, I, I can I can imagine man hours. I don't know dollar amount. I yeah, mean, so from, from, from my point of view, what I would ask, and here you may not ask for a dollar. You may turn around and say, I need 32 man hours every week to do hanging baskets. And so then I will translate that into a dollar amount. Right. So that the board understands. But, okay. We're expecting it. No, I, I yeah, I just right. you know, room, you know, whatever it is, if it's something that you're asking for township to come and give resources of our staff, it's important to know that. So so all the uh, the welcome signs get replanted four times a year. Yeah. And I need help for that and picking up the, the, the residue and doing traffic control. I should put that's its own piece of paper and it would have the four different yep. entries. And, 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 and tie it back to, again, Paul, tie it back to the here why it's important. Okay. Because my guess is you're not, you're not a whole staff person, but you might be 25% or you might be 50% of somebody over a year's period of time that we're total you know that we're giving and so the board needs to understand that that's the investment they're making but it's also being tied back to a specific spot in our strategic plan to achieve what we're trying to do if that makes sense yes it's we we've made we've made a major shift when we put the strategic plan together as being the basis for how we budget I mean, we sat before the board back in May, sat down and went through this and started talking about what it is they wanted to see us do. What are some of the budget kind of things that we need to take into account? And we have a whole list that we're trying to figure out how to accomplish that the board wanted to do based off of this. So we make all of that happen. In addition, we have some things like, you know, I still have a police department that has to run, right? That, you know, if you look at this, I would argue that the police department meets a lot of these needs, but how much of it for each one becomes a question. How much are you investing in? And so that's the spreadsheet that I'm asking Rich to work on and say, you know, we have one person that's dedicated to traffic enforcement, but then we do these traffic enforcement projects throughout the town five, six, ten times a year, and we use four officers for eight hours or 12 hours, and we do that for five days. So all of a sudden we have, you know, two or 3,000 man hours tied up in traffic enforcement in addition to a one track. And so it might be that two officers are in the traffic enforcement helping with your speed. And George's team is implementing and putting in these temporary speed tables. And so that takes them a day of eight men or seven men or however many men are out there doing that. And excuse me when I say that, it's only because we have men. It could be women, but it's seven people out there working and, and doing that. Um, we want to be able to explain those hours and 
try to justify why we have the app and what they're doing. Yes. So it's being tied to this and helping us achieve what our goals are. That makes sense. And it helps, it helps me remember every day I come to work. I should be working on something here. And if I'm not, then I've got to figure out how I'm using my time. I'm probably not using it. Yep. Is there a due date where we just wait for Rich to reach he's out? Gonna, he's going to send these out electronically to everybody. And he's going to say, I need that by which date. And he and I will confirm that in the morning. He, he, I was supposed to confirm that with him before he left today. He had a date with his mom and his sister. Oh, we need to go, so. <laughs> There's important things in life, right? You know? uh, but anyway, uh, it's not right. so I, I would think we're probably middle of September. I mean, this is what we're looking at. Uh, I will tell you, I've talked to a lot of other managers and they haven't even started their budget yet. So uh, I know we're kind of ahead of the game, but we, we do it early so that when we get to November and December, we're not. Stressing, and um, we did that one year, right, George? Yes, we did. This year, I, I got hired December first, and we did a budget within like three weeks. And I don't ever want to do that again. That's not. That wasn't a lot of fun. Um, I much rather work on it a little bit every play along the way. Come back to it. Before you go, is there anything else I can provide? Is there anything else the township can do to support what your mission is? To help you accomplish what it is you're trying to do, or we, or we, or we get close, or we helping you to do that. And, you know, so, so I have this question. I've been invited to speak at the next. I have a, a topographical Google map. They were coming out of my head of where where the street creek proposal, you know, where street creek could go. Westchester Park. The question becomes. This is, George, something that I need to sort of clear the air first and mm -hmm. run into it because um, it's going to need to be watered. I, don't have, I have no money for this. I mean, first, we're going to have to look for a grant and then a matcher and all of that. But let's say there was positive conversation all the way around. And let's say there were street trees that were allowed. And we have to get all the permission from all the little Upkeepers and Benari and Don Kelly gas and all that. I mean, it's takes a long, long time. But let's say we did it, and now the street trees have been approved. We found the money. We finally agree on what species to put in, and and now they're put in. We had very successful planting of trees last uh, no, end of November, beginning of December. I never that late. Oh, and uh, and a lot of it is the public works watering them there, but a lot of it, the other part of it, that they were planted late in the season, did one sort of dose of water, and then they just settled in, and they sort of they were out the winter. Yeah, right? they found their way, you know. And frequently the trees are don't always make it. So my question is this: you know, how do I imagine all this? I don't know if this is going to come out. If it's, if I can make this happen, it's 2022. It might be 2023. It might be 10. But if I did, if we would require, or it certainly would be helpful, or it would be key to have the new trees watered. You know, the first year is careful. Yeah. Did you volunteers to help with that, Paul? Well, I. Here's the deal: it's we're talking. Highly traffic, you know, the um, roads with really, really high traffic. Yeah. And you need a specified, you need something, you know, the gator, George loaned us the gator bags, and I'm going to take them down at the end of October and hand them back to George, and then I can install them next spring. But <clears throat> you need know, a professional truck with these blinking lights. Kind of hold their own in the traffic zone, you know. Like. Yeah, the, the challenge is when, when we've helped with the hanging baskets, we were able to get one volunteer and have a staff person drive around and all that. But the volunteer stayed in the truck, they never actually got out of the truck. Here, there's no way around it, you have to get out in traffic and 
water, all these, all these things. So that's, that hasn't been something so far that we've been able to be comfortable with a volunteer participating with. And, and I think it is a challenge, you know, uh, and my concern, you know, is frankly, if we're doing, we didn't do flowers this year, right? but we did do the trees. If we have to continue to do the trees that we planted last year, we're having to do the new trees, and if we're having to do flowers next year, I'm not sure what our resources are. You know, I mean, they're, they're, you know, we're not infinite in our, in our resources with people um, we are trying to do a lot of things to free up some of their time we're you know we're looking at hiring a cleaning company um, we're looking at not hiring a cleaning company we're looking at hiring a person to come in um, and they can take over cleaning the building for us and that would free up public works and have to come in the morning and clean our building but it, that's not going to answer that specifically, but it might help with a couple hours towards that. So, so, so using what you're thinking, and I, I really acknowledge all this, you know, that um, it's not fair for me to dream up projects in baskets, north and south, and Westchester Pike. So perhaps what I should dream up is that Westchester Pike comes online with the idea of trees after the trees on two don't need any more. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's what I'm thinking, George. You can, I mean, well, no, that would be 2023. I mean, that's fine, you know. And as a, anyway, the it's under continuous uh, construction. We need everything to calm down because bees don't make it well, and there's a lot of industrial around. Sure. <laughs> So I mean, so if so if so, is it, am I okay with 2023 suggesting this for 2023? Which look, I, I think you suggested. I think we look at it. We see what the time. I think it's. I think if we can figure out if you work with sit down with George and work out really what the time investment is that we know, and we go back to the board and say, look, we're we're basically doing this, and we're happy to do it, but it's equal to this much of a person, just so you know, and make sure we're all in the same right. Yeah, if I'm going to be doing this presentation to Shade Tree, I have to be able to say, am I, am I presenting something that's pie in the sky, or am I presenting something that cannot be reality this year or next year, but it could be real? Look, I think we are always moving towards that, Paul. You know, I mean, look, if we're going to plant a thousand trees in this township over the next five years, we've got a lot of places to plant trees, and we've got to figure it out. And George is going to spend a lot of time, particularly on the ones that are township property, property, doing water. I mean, that's that's the reality. If we if we plant 60 trees across the street here, and you know, if they're going to survive, we're going to have to spend an amount of time doing that. And it may be that I turn to the board and say, I've got a person that really spends. 85% of their time watering trees, watering flowers, and doing that. The problem is that right now, I think every time we do that, it's not eight person, it's two. You know, and so I, I, you know, maybe there's a way we can change that. Maybe over here we do it with the gator and it makes it easier. I don't know. And so we're looking at those kind of things. And so I'm not saying no at, at all. I'm saying, and is it pie in the sky? Well, it, lots of things that we start out with. If you'd have asked me when I started working on this uh, strategic plan, it was pie in the sky. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know where we were going to end up. And to end up with this document, I was thrilled. This was a lot of hard work by a lot of folks that made that happen. And so, but it, it was a dream. And so I'm, I'm all for dreams, you know? I mean, Fire company is going to tell you they're in a new building because they had three, not because you know with that the fact that they need to do something to build a new thing. But you know it was it was a dream that they had. So it starts out with a dream, and initially it may not look possible, but let's keep working at it and let's work our way through it and figure out where it ends up. You know, and maybe we say you want to plant 50 trees along Westchester Pike, and we say can we do 10 
over the next you know 10 every year for the next five years i don't know you know put a plan together and keep yeah. working at it it's kind of it's kind of like our community uh vegetable guards you know it's to keep working at it and we get to take a step back and then we take another step forward any other questions concerns related to the budget or to your Thank you all very much. Thank you. What you do is key to who we are. Um, we can't do it without you. Uh, we can't. You know, I don't. Our staff does. Is there's not enough of us to do what you guys pick up and carry on without us. And so I am so thankful for what you do. Uh, it makes our community better. So that. We appreciate.